Growing up in South Africa, my generation would definitely have owned one of three cars. It was either City Golf, Toyota Conquest, or a Mazda 323. And the only one that lives on, albeit having shared a couple of numbers, is the Mazda 3. Now there definitely is some crossover between the two because Mazda South Africa claim that this latest version which was introduced to the world at the Los Angeles Motor Show last year is the seventh generation. Not really, it's actually the fourth generation but it is the biggest seller for Mazda globally. Here in South Africa I think Mazda really wants to build on the legacy. Styling can be such a subjective and often polarizing matter, but I think in this case everyone agrees the Mazda 3 is a cracker. Their Coda design philosophy has matured over the years, and what you have in the 3 is beauty through simplicity. Clean, subtle lines that flow in such a harmonious way that it seems to be one solid form. It really is a stark contrast to what we have been seeing coming out of Japan of late. The sleek design of the lights, front and rear, further emphasize a body that's devoid of unnecessary lines and creases, and their position on the extremities ensures squat, sportier proportions. What is really interesting though is the chrome detailing that runs along the bottom window edge in the hatch, but then flips across to the top edge in the sedan. And the sporty becomes elegant almost. But I really do love the rear of this car. The illusion created by the black spoiler of where does the body end and the glass begin is really so effective. Wow, like really wow. She is hot. I mean, if it was based on looks alone, I'm in love, but I'm not a shallow guy. So for me, what matters the most is what's under the skin. I hope she doesn't disappoint. Just like there are two body styles to choose from, you only get a choice of two engines in the new Mazda 3. A 1.5 litre and a 2 litre, both are naturally aspirated petrol engines, but I guess Mazda will tell you significantly they are the latest generation of their Sky Active G engines. This is where things start getting a little bit interesting though, because there are better engines available. They've got the Sky Active X engine, which is actually quite interesting, the technology. You get the efficiency of the diesel, the torque of the diesel, but obviously the high revving nature of a petrol engine. We're not getting that in South Africa because they're claiming fuel. We are in the two liter, which obviously is only linked to the Astina, the top spec model. And those figures are, yeah, they're, they're not massive. It's like 121 kilowatts, 213 newton meters. And even up here at altitude, it's not really that excited about getting going. Once it's going, it's fine, but it doesn't really want to get there. Now the 1.5 liter, which you get across the range, is only 88 kilowatts and 153 newton meters. I think is really going to struggle up here at altitude, which is where the biggest market is. I know they've worked hard on NVH and the noise, vibration and harshness. The cabin is so well insulated. It really is a special car to drive. I think BMW and Mercedes-Benz could pick up some pointers. But I know we we're raving about their Coda design language and how awesome it looks, but I'll tell you what, they like the Yodas of design because this interior is equally impressive. They have carried the clean, uncluttered exterior design elements through to the interior. The dash reads as one clean, slim edge across the entire front fascia. The underbite emphasizing its sleekness and ensuring good legroom for the front passenger. There is definitely a hint of Audi with how they have laid out the air vents. And the infotainment screen is really well integrated. It really isn't an afterthought. That 8.8 inch screen is all new for the brand and is linked to their MZD Connect system, which is standard across the range and supports both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with two USB ports and Bluetooth connectivity. The center console has been redesigned with the shift knob, new command control and armrest move forward. The new leather multifunction steering wheel with illuminated switches is height and reach adjustable. 
the cloth seats are replaced with leather from the individual spec upwards and then also includes a 10-way electronically adjustable driver seat which makes finding the perfect driving position super easy. The spec level also sees a 7-inch TFT screen added to the dash layout. It's actually unbelievable. This ability that Mazda has to create drop-dead gorgeous vehicles continues. They did it with the CX-3, the CX-5, and I think this is the best version. The 3 looks absolutely amazing. You're waiting for the butt, and there is quite a big butt. I know Sky Active Technology is something they've been pushing for a long time, and as long as they've been pushing, I've been complaining about it because we live in a generation where people have got used to and expect small capacity turbo engines. It's not because we want to race from traffic light to traffic light. It's just the usability that low down delivery of power allows you to overtake. And then of course, I've got to talk about price. The Mazda 3 with the 1.5 litre engine is offered in three specification levels and it starts at 360,000 Rand for the active hatch. The dynamic and individual spec ramp up the creature comforts and are available in manual and automatic and are priced from 374,000 to 422,000. Our top spec Astina model will set you back 474,000 Rand with that 2 litre engine only offered with the automatic transmission. So if it is looks you after, <laughs> this is your beauty queen. Looks great, interior amazing, and I love the drive quality. They really have gone up market with that. But like every beauty queen, you never see them racing down the catwalk. Your Mazda 3 isn't gonna do that either.